Right. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to our students online as well. Welcome. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. We'll get into our session. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, O oh God. We thank you for yet another opportunity to come together to study your word, to learn. And even as we learn about the Holy Spirit, we pray, God, that you will bring revelation, you'll bring clarity, that your word will minister to us, God. And everything that we learn, we'll apply it and use it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so our last class, we completed chapter 10. We looked at you know, the different ways of releasing prophecy. Uh, so did we stop at how do we do this or did we complete that? We completed that, right? So and then towards the end of last class, I said, you know, get into groups and spend time praying and, you know, perceiving and prophesying on each other. So I hope you know, that some of you said that you were able to do that. But I want to encourage you, uh, keep doing it. Right? Uh, keep trying it. Keep praying. Keep uh, you know, using your prophetic gifts, stir up that gift inside of you. And uh, I'm sure you'll be able to, you know, continue to grow in that gift. So right now we begin with chapter 11. Is that right? Okay. Chapter 11, the anointing and the ministering in power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we've always heard this word anointing, right? We all say, oh, anointing and anointed Anointed preaching, anointed worship, anointed teaching, anointed sleeping. Get good dreams and visions in your anointed sleeping. But let's look at the flow of the anointing. What does the word anointing mean? To anoint simply means to, it, it, it is derived from the Old Testament. When God would choose people, he would anoint them. It is the aspect of taking of oil and pouring upon their head. That's what Moses did to Aaron. The oil flew, came down on Aaron's beard. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing oil ran down Aaron's beard. The, the anointing oil was placed on David. right? So when David was anointed, remember Samuel came, he poured that oil and anointed him the next king of Israel. So in the Old Testament, the picture of, of, of pouring out of oil is the, the representation of anointing. Now, when we pour oil, do we have any control over it? No, right? Because it's it's a pouring out. It just you're just pouring it out. It can flow. It can fall anywhere. Now, when you translate this in the New Testament, the oil is referred to the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit is released, it is called the anointing. Very simple as that. So, for example, God can use people, God can use things around us and anoint it for his purpose. Right? So, for example, you may sing a song. Right? And this song may be a very simple song. Right? And God can use that song and release his anointing upon that song to touch many people's lives. Now, let me give you this example. Many years ago, I was leading worship. And uh, one of the songs I sang was, uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Everyone know that song? It's, a, it's like an old chorus, you know. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. It's a faster song. Now, it was, I think, about 30, 40 people during the time. And I did the whole set. I finished the worship set. But after the worship set, two, three people came up to me and said, we like the song, you know, we, the, we felt the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the song, Lord, I lift your name on high. I said, are you sure this song? This is, you know, it's a fast song. But, you know, some of them said, we could feel the anointing in that song. And that day I realized that it's very little to do about the tune of the song. Right? Very little to do about the keyboard, especially now, in a time and a season that we are living in, 
one keyboard is enough for everyone to cry during worship yes or no one keyboard you know nowadays we have these keyboards which are the new end the high end keyboards it does everything it has the synthesizer it has the uh, you know the pads everything all you need to do is play one or two notes the whole sound will reverb and it will sound very emotional it can hit our emotions and during that time if you take one of those emotional songs gone have we done that now remember the anointing of the holy spirit is not an emotion it is power and anointing being released now how god does it it's up to him but it's not about the song it's not about how we sing it's about the anointing of the holy spirit through a song so he can use a fast song and release his anointing or he can use a slow song to release an anointing example another example could be of preaching now a person can come and preach for 45 minutes an entire sermon on the other hand another person can come and he's preaching for 10 minute sermon but in that 10 minutes the anointing of the holy spirit falls in such a way that this 10 minutes is greater than that 45 minutes why the anointing makes the difference so so always say okay say this after me the anointing of the holy spirit will make the difference in my life see we study we read the word we prepare all of that is important but without the anointing it's not going to impact people right we can learn how to play the instrument we can learn how to you know uh, sing good we need to do that but we need to back it up and say god you anoint it so that people will be blessed there's nothing more we can do we, we can just prepare ourselves but it's the anointing that can touch people's life you understand what's happening here look at the old testament saul king saul there was a time when king saul thought he was very small in his eyes before he was anointed the king god made him the king when he became the king he thought he's very great what happened the anointing of the holy spirit left him even though he was king, the anointing was not there right then you look at david he was just a shepherd boy god used that sling where there were so many people the entire army of israel is sitting and looking at goliath and saying no we can't do this but god david knew that he's anointed so it's not about the sword, about the shield, about physical, physical strength. It's not about that. He said, God has anointed me. This one sling and this one stone is enough to bring this giant down. Now, what happened? What's the difference? You had an army. They were strong enough, but they were not anointed. Here you got David, one sling young boy anointed by god so this is a picture that we must have it's not about who we are it's about what the holy spirit does in our life now we all have limitations right we want to do so much but we have limitations but whatever we do if it's anointed it will make an impact to people's lives especially in ministry don't ever try to do anything on your own strength on your own ability Meaning what? We read, we prepare ourselves, music, reading, preparing, teaching, all of that. But then you must depend on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's when you will see the impact. That's when you will see lives touched and changed. Okay? The Lord Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit in all that he did. His preaching, teaching, healing, delivering. Everything he did by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Think of this. The Lord Jesus didn't go to the devil or didn't go to, uh, you know, people who were possessed came to him. He didn't say, do you know who I am? I'm the Messiah. Is there any place where he says that? No. The demons recognized him. 
but he didn't go telling everyone i'm the messiah how can you demon come to me he doesn't go and say to the blind man see i'm the messiah so i will heal you now no everything that he did his healing his deliverance his teaching his preaching was through the anointing of the holy spirit the same anointing or the same holy spirit that is working in our lives so what does it teach us if jesus being the son of god depended on the anointing of the holy spirit how much more you and i must depend on it right there are a couple of verses here let's read luke 4 18 and maybe uh, hebrews 2 3 and 4 Go ahead, Luke 4, 18, Hebrews 2, 3, and 4. Where's the mic? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to, the, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty them that are bridged. All right. I want to just zero in on that first portion. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has. What has He had? What has He done? Anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to go heal the sick, set the captives free, do all of those miracles. Right? Hebrews two, three, and four. <laughs> How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? How God also so, yeah, that's that should do. How can we neglect what he has given us? Now, the same Holy Spirit anoints and empowers people in different ways in different degrees of power for different purposes and in different measures. Now, I want you to think about it this way. Don't ever think that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is only for ministry. That will be a wrong thinking. Now, the, Holy, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is for all areas of our life. It's for all measures. It's for all purposes. That he gives it to us. For example, if I am a, you know, I, if I have a family. Now, I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be a good father and to be a good leader of my family. I have children. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to, to learn how to teach my children. I can't force my children to do things. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that will help me to do what God wants me to do. So it's not like I, I should pray and I say, Holy Spirit, uh, you know, I'm starting ministry, so please anoint me. No, that is there. But the Holy Spirit will anoint us for all purposes. Everyone say all. All. Right. So for example, there are some things, you know, you may feel it's very simple. Okay, you're doing the setup here, sound and setup. You can praise, Lord. Anoint me with your Holy Spirit so that when I'm doing this, I will learn it. I will understand. And then one day you'll use this gift for me to use it in different places. What is a gift? What are you doing? Sound and setup. Very simple. Or graphics. You want to be a graphics designer. You say, Lord, anoint me by the power of your Holy Spirit that when I'm doing these graphics, as a graphics designer, as I'm preparing, give me the wisdom, give me some ideas. And through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to do well. So it's not only for ministry, it's for every area of our life. Every area. Okay? So let's look at a few examples here. Moses was anointed to be a leader, a deliverer, a miracle worker, prophet, and an administrator. He led a large nation of people into Israel. Now, look at these different aspects of anointing that Moses had. Was Moses a great leader? One of the best in the Old Testament. 
what was he firstly he went he led the people out of israel he chose that i mean even though he didn't want it single handedly led the people of israel out of egypt two he was a deliverer he delivered them now after the miracles he didn't look at them and say hey, what do we do next no he said after the passover if you read scriptures it says that after the passover the next day he led the people out of israel out of egypt he he was a deliverer he was a miracle worker when god told him look that staff in your hand i'm going to use it and i'm going to anoint that and through that you will do mighty miracles god did it right paul he was a prophet he he, he was he, he when he led the people of israel he he had the prophetic anointing upon him and then he, he was used as an administrator as well what is administration to look after and we got about you know four, three, three to four million people coming out he was looking after many things but again uh, here if you read the uh, you know in the book of exodus leviticus numbers we see that moses was overwhelmed by the tasks he was a good administrator but he failed in one area of raising up leaders to look after the other tasks it was not until his father in law jethro came and told him you need to raise up other leaders but the anointing of the holy spirit enabled one person to do all of this okay next joshua also anointed to be a leader he received the anointing that was on moses and operated in the same kind of leadership and wisdom that moses did however he did not manifest the miracles as much as moses did there was the same level same wisdom that joshua walked in same leadership skill but the miracles were not as much as moses but the anointing of the holy spirit was there nobody can go as a leader imagine he seeing the walls of jericho he was bold he knew he knew that god would bring it down right it didn't affect him then we see in judges judges were leaders who helped govern israel for a period of time and all through the book of the, the book of judges we see the spirit of the lord came upon them samson stands out as a judge what did samson do you know what he did some of the things if you read in samson's life god had anointed him in such a way there were not much of miracles no prophecies but god used his physical strength anointed his physical strength and used him powerfully with the jaw bone of a donkey samson killed 1000 people okay can you think of it five people okay 10 people okay 20 people okay 100 okay imagine one jaw bone in his hand donkey's jaw bone he killed 1000 people from where you get that kind of a strength it's called supernatural strength it is because of the anointing of the holy spirit right imagine he's killed 500 Oh, I'm tired. Another five hundred are coming. Okay, finish everyone. It was, it's not a natural thing for a person to do, but Samson, being anointed by the Holy Spirit, God used his physical strength. Then, when even though he, you know, he fell into sin, and then towards the end of his life, he prayed and he said, "God, anoint me once more that I may destroy these people and die with them." God sent the anointing upon him. So it was not about the hair. Of course, when he when they cut the hair, he his anointing was was gone. But even with that hair that was cut, God sent the anointing, and he was able to break the walls down. So what does it show? It's not always a the anointing is not always a physical uh, act that we must do. God will anoint even the smallest thing that we do. for his glory can anoint it now we the problem is we want to see the fruit immediately so don't don't be in a hurry to see the fruit give it time 
give the Lord a time to minister to you, to learn from those seasons of anointing that God has in your life. Right? Then we see Samuel, Elisha, Elijah, and Elisha. Let's look at Elijah and Elisha. Elijah, God is using so powerfully. He's walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Many, many miracles. He defeated 400 prophets of Baal in a minute. He's laughing at them. He's saying, maybe your God is sleeping. Shout a little more loudly so that he'll wake up. Can you, can you think of that? There are 400 versus 1. 400 versus 1. He's not getting scared. He's saying, your God is sleeping. You shout a little louder. And then single-handedly, he defeated 400 people. So God used that inner strength inside him to defeat. Imagine God is telling him, you go to the caves, I will send ravens to come and feed you. He believed it. And you see, look at, look at the life of Elijah. He did so many miracles. And God used him in that area of his life. God needed, you know, the nation of Israel needed an Elijah at that time. But think of this. This anointed man of God, full of power of the Holy Spirit, he defeated 400 prophets of Baal, but he ran away from one woman. Jezebel said, I'm going to come and I'm going to kill you. He ran away. What happened? Sometimes when we are anointed by the Holy Spirit, we look at the fear, we look at what people are doing, we look at the mountains, we look at the challenges that are coming, and they look bigger. Who is more, 400 prophets of Baal or one woman? 400 is definitely more. But, but he, he, Elijah didn't think about the anointing that he had. What if Elijah had said, what, you know, hey, I've killed 400 people. 400 prophets of Baal, they tried to come against me. They, I defeated you. You are coming against me. I will stand here only. Do what you want. But we don't see that. That means what? See, God has anointed us. But we also need to be aware of the fear and of all the challenges that the enemy can bring against us. That's where our real stand, our real strength is shown. In the adversities, in the difficulties, when we depend on the Holy Spirit and He gives us the grace to move forward. Right? Elijah was anointed in such a powerful way. He confronted false prophets. He confronted you know, witchcraft that Israel was into. He confronted them directly. He confronted even the, uh, the king during that time. Then the mantle went, into, went to Elisha, the next leader. We see that Elisha asked for something very great. He said, see, where, if you read the story, it's very beautiful. Wherever Elijah is going, Elisha is following. Elijah is saying, you go, and we have some other work. No, no, no. As long as the Lord lives, I'm coming with you. He goes to one place. Then again, Elijah says, see, God is calling me somewhere else. You go. Don't come with me. No, I'm going to be with you only. And then he says, okay, now, Elisha, you've been a faithful servant. Tell me what you want. God is going to take me anytime now. Tell me what you want. Okay, what I want. He was already ready with the answer. What I want is a double portion of what you have. Elijah says, now, see, that is not up to me. You've asked a very difficult thing. But if you see me going up to heaven, you will get that anointing. And Elisha did double the miracles that Elijah did. Right? So when we talk about the anointing, the anointing enables us to do things because God knew that Elisha is going through difficult, more difficult times than Elijah. So he needs double portion. Okay? Then we looked at David. We look at David. David, God used him. One of the tell me one of the ways God used David. How did God anoint David? What was one of his main gifts that God anointed him with? 
worship okay fighting okay prophecy sorry hymns dreams okay i'm looking for one sorry skills as a musician okay yeah shepherd becomes a king that's no what is the, the anointing that god used very powerfully in his life of course there were many but one thing that is i heard it somebody said something psalms that's all i wanted to hear what did david do when you say psalms what is the first thing that comes to your mind david why because he was writing oh god i am sad let me write oh god i am happy let me write oh god i am running away let me write god i am sleepy let me write everything he was writing of course moses also wrote quite a few psalms and there were others who wrote but most of the psalms was his writing so god anointed that skill now was david very highly uh, qualified oh he was looking after his father's sheep he was a shepherd boy He's not highly qualified. He didn't go to Egypt and study and come. He didn't go to Babylon and study and come. He was there only, looking after his father's sheep. He didn't go for music classes. When looking after the sheep, what to do? Take the harp and go pl keep playing, practice. But God anointed that to a point where King Saul is, you know, getting afflicted by demons, and he's playing and singing, and the demon is running away. Now the demon is not thinking which scale is this? Oh, is this easy singing? The, is he singing the right key? Demon is not worried about all that. He's worried about oh, yo, David is coming. The other fellows is okay. They don't know what they are doing. They are playing everything correctly. They are singing, but there is no anointing. Forget that. David, this fellow, seventeen-year-old boy, he comes. Then it's a problem for me. You see the difference. King Saul already had many people, you know, playing music, what trumpets and harps and flutes. There were many people. Devil is not bothered about them. They had a full band. Here, David is single band. One person. Oh, the devil is running away. Why? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see the difference. You can have a big worship team. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you can have one person lead worship, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit can bless many people's lives. See the difference, right? So David was used powerfully that way. He, God used him in songwriting. Again, he became the king. Now, as a king, he has to make decisions. God gave him the wisdom. God gave him the grace. Many uh, again, many many gifts that he had. God just enabled him to flow in the gifts. So let's look at the next portion. What is the result or the fruit of the anointing? Are we anointed of God? All of us are anointed. The Holy Spirit is inside us, and He'll begin to pour out His anointing in our gifts and callings. Yes. So what is the result? The Bible says. Jesus says. You shall be known by your fruit. A good tree will bear good fruit. A bad tree will bear. Jesus goes on to say, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. A bad tree cannot be bear good fruit. So, what is the fruit of the anointing? It is the anointing that births the supernatural. All of our natural abilities and talents acquired. Acquired skills with which we are able to accomplish things, but we must remember it is the anointing that empowers us to go beyond ourselves and release the supernatural work of God. David, he learned the music and to sing. Natural abilities, but it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that made the demons run away from him. That brought comfort to King Saul. Look at the New Testament. Peter, his natural gift was what? Fishing. 
That's his call. He was he knew how to fish. You you wake him up in the midnight and say, Come, we go fishing, he knows what to do. But now God has anointed him for something else. Greater than his natural ability. That's what I say. Always say this. When the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the leaders, saw Peter, what did they say? No. Yes. They saw an unschooled fisherman. You fellow, you, you, I know you. You are you go to the Sea of Galilee and you're catching fish. Fishing was not a big work that time. Common thing. Everyone would fish. So I know you. You're not learned. And you are standing in front of the Pharisees, the leaders of the law. I know everything from the Old Testament. You are telling me how to lead my life. But God used Peter in such a way that he stood, he had more revelation than any of the Pharisees and Sadducees. What was he? Fisherman. So more than our natural abilities, God uses our supernatural, that uses us supernaturally through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One of the most, uh, you know, one, one important fruit is the supernatural work of God. Something that we cannot do naturally. Peter, naturally, I'm a fisherman. Nothing more. And you tell me, I'll go do fishing and I'll come back. But God said, no, no, no. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will come on you. And you'll do more than that. That generations, thousands of years later, we are talking about a Peter who was a fisherman who didn't travel more than 50 miles from his house. Can you think of that? Think of God's picture. Think of how Jesus thought of it. We At that time, they said, hey, Peter is a... Nothing, he's just a fisherman. But now nobody's talking about the Pharisees. Who knows the names of Pharisees? We don't know. Do we know the name of Peter? The entire world knows. Beyond our natural abilities. That's one of the fruit. Joseph was able to interpret dreams. Moses was highly educated. But it was the Spirit of God that enabled him to do those miracles. Daniel was able to interpret dreams. How? Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural. Have you ever thought of this? Have you read Daniel? Everyone's read Daniel? King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. Now he calls everyone. He says, see, I've got a dream. But you fellows don't have any work inside the temple. No, here. You are simply sitting and eating, doing nothing. So firstly, you tell me what my dream is and then interpret the dream. Now those other people are saying, see, King, you tell us the dream. We'll interpret it for you. He says, no. You tell me, why am I paying you? You tell me what my dream is. How do I know what you You may say something. How do I believe that it's true? You tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Do both. Now that's impossible. But Daniel goes back. He prays Daniel chapter 2. He's already got the result. He's got the answer. Towards the end of chapter 2, he says, I praise you, O God, for you are the God who reveals dreams and mysteries. And he's praising God. He goes to the king in full confidence. He says, King, I am just a simple man from Jerusalem. You have brought me here. But I'll tell you what. God inside me has revealed the dream that you have. This is what you dreamt. This is what it means. The simple man, Daniel, lived on as the governor for Babylon under three kings. Nobody knows what the other leaders, nobody even knows the names of the other leaders. But the whole world still talks about Daniel. That is supernatural. Right? Two, it is the anointing that causes lasting works to be done through us. Flesh, the work of the flesh will result flesh. The work of the spirit will result in spirit. If the Lord Jesus you know, there are, history says that there were many people who claimed to be messiahs. And remember, one of the Pharisees, the leaders of the law also says, there are many leaders who have come like this and said they are the messiah. If it's something of God, 
No, if it's something of man, it will die. But if it's something of God, you cannot do anything. Remember, it's in Jesus' ministry. Think about this. If Jesus' ministry was not anointed by God, if it was not of the Holy Spirit, why would we even talk about it now? We wouldn't be talking about it. The work of the Holy Spirit will bring lasting fruit in your life. And you and I, even we, we you know we, we've done whatever we do, we pass on. Eventually, one day we will pass on, but there will be lasting fruit of the work that we do. That is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Right? If it's flesh, the flesh will profit nothing. If I did things out of the flesh, meaning I, I'm doing things out of my, my, so that I get recognition, so that I become famous, so that I may uh, be, you know, recognized. It's a fleshly work. It will profit us nothing. That's why Jesus said, "No, you are like hypocrites, the Pharisees. You are like whitewashed tombs. Outside you're clean, but if you go inside the tomb, what is there?" What's inside the tomb? Is it nice? What is there? Death, bones, and smell. But outside it is clean, whitewashed. So basically, what Jesus is trying to say is outside you're trying to prove that you're good, but inside you're dead. That's why he looked at the Pharisees and said, You are the blind leading the blind. You don't know anything. You're trying to lead others. It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. John 6.33, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Think of this. The words, did Jesus write a book? Did he write down all his miracles? There's only one account where he goes to the disciples and he tells them about the 40 days of fasting that he did. He, he tells the disciples, this is what happened. But everything else was what the disciples saw with their own eyes. John writes and he says, we are eyewitnesses of this. We are not talking stories. Everything that Jesus did, we are eyewitnesses. We saw him walking on water. We saw in our own eyes. We saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was dead. We put him in the tomb. It was four days. We did it. We saw it. And we saw him walking out of the tomb. We sat with Lazarus and ate food also after that. Eyewitness. Then we saw Jesus dying on the cross. Now some people are saying he didn't die. We saw him die on the cross. We carried his body out. We, John is saying, I, you know, he saw it. He was there. The disciples were there. They know. We saw Jesus resurrect from the dead. We touched the marks in the body. Think We're not dreaming. We're not talking out of our head. What we saw, we are telling you. So what is the point? The work of the Spirit will impress a lasting work in our ministries. That even now, Jesus, whatever he spoke, we have an account of it in the Bible. And even now, thousands of years later, what Jesus spoke to 12 disciples in one small village, when we read it, it's touching people's lives. Have you ever thought of that? It's so powerful, no? The anointing. Jesus is teaching the disciples in Matthew chapter 5, you are the salt of the earth. The salt loses its saltiness, it's of no use, but to be taken and trampled upon. You are the light of the world. A light is not put under the table, but you, it's put on top so that people will see it and they can see. And you're, you know, the same way, let your light so shine so that people see your life and glorify the Father in heaven. He said it to 12 people sitting there. Right? Or a few people sitting there. Now, two, you know, thousand, two thousand years or later, when we read it, or something happens inside us. Why? Because it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see the difference? Are there other books available? Plenty of books. Plenty of books available. But the flesh 
will touch the flesh. The spirit will touch the spirit. Okay, third one. It is the anointing that breaks demonic yokes and removes demonic burdens. Right? Isaiah 59 verse 19. I love this verse. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. The anointing of the Holy Spirit breaks demonic yokes, demonic bondages. Physically, we cannot break a yoke. If somebody comes up to you and says, please pray for me, I'm going through uh, sickness. What will we do? We'll pray. We can't tell them, go and have this medicine. Give them medicine name. You're not a doctor. Now, the doctors can give 100 medicines. Nothing is happening. Like the woman with the issue of bleeding. For many years, he's been going to the doctors, taking her medicines, no result. But the moment she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the anointing was released. And she was healed. Think of this. So many years eating medicine, eating medicine, nothing is happening. It's only the same. She just touched the hem of her garment, the anointing brought complete healing. The Bible says at that moment, she was healed. This is the anointing that breaks demonic yokes over our life. So if there are, you know, yokes or habits in our life, and we try to overcome it on our own strength, we'll try it for one week, two weeks, one month, two months. Listen, the enemy is will easily make us fall. Very easy for him. We're trying on our own strength. One month, two months, that's it. We will fall. Because he has a way of... The enemy has a way of bringing us down. He knows how to deal with us. But if, the, if we do this by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then there's a challenge. Then the enemy can't bring, come against us. So, for example, there's a person who is you know, addicted to alcohol. He tries on his own strength and he says, I'm going to... Stop this. One month, okay, two months. Eventually some problem will come and he gets back into it. Why? Because of own strength. We're weak. But if we go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, this is what I want to stop this in my life. I want to change. I don't want to be drinking. And I depend on the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will break this yoke. A demonic control that the enemy has. So what is he doing? He's dealing with a root. Here I'm trying on my own strength. Okay, one month over I'm not drinking. Two months over I'm not drinking. But when I depend on the Holy Spirit, the root cause is broken. Everyone understand what I'm saying? Yes? Okay. Four. The anointing can be increased. And there are various levels of anointing. Example, the 70 leaders received a portion of the anointing that was on Moses. Elisha received a double portion of the anointing on of Elijah. So the anointing can be increased. There are levels of anointing. This is very simple. Now, a believer who's just, you know, maybe one month in the Lord, he's learning. God has anointed him. But there's a learning process. But 10 years down the line, he, sh he should have you know, increased in his anointing. The level of his anointing should have increased. 15 years, increase. 20 years, increase. As we grow in the Lord, we must expect the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to also increase. Here's the challenge. Consistency is the challenge. It's very easy to give up. It's very easy to you know, say, OK, I can do this now. I don't really need to pray. I don't really need to spend so much time. Half an hour of prayer is enough. And so we, make, we begin to uh, you know, change our priorities in life, especially when we get busy. But remember, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is what sustains us. That's what we have to go by, right? Next one. We need to repeatedly un be anointed afresh. Psalms 92.10, But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. 
and I have been anointed with fresh oil. Now you and I, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But the more, so think of this as a paradox, right? We are filled with the Holy Spirit, but we can keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's like opposites. If you take a bottle, one of your water bottles, you fill it with water. And the moment it comes to the brim, you put it off. If you don't put it off, what will happen? It will overflow. Now, you can't look at the water and say, stop in Jesus' name. Can we do that? The water will keep flowing until one of your friends comes and gives you one whack and says, put it off. But if you're holding the bottle and you, you switch on the, you know, you put on the tap, the water is just going to keep flowing. That's the nature of water. It's going to flow. The nature of the anointing of the Holy Spirit is, even if we are full, it will keep flowing. It'll, we keep filling. So I can never say that, like in the water bottle, it becomes full. And then we put it off. But here, in the spiritual, we are filled and we can keep being filled in the Holy Spirit. Keep being filled in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You understand what, what, what's happening here? When we become believers, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But we want, need to be keep filling ourselves. Saying, God, I want more. I want more. I want more. Right? Then, the anointing can be released, imparted, or transferred. Right? Now, look at these examples. Moses... Anointed, appointed and anointed Joshua to lead the people. Elijah anointed Elisha to be the next prophet. Jesus anointed the 12 disciples to take the ministry forward. The Apostle Paul anointed Timothy and Titus and all these other leaders to be in the pastoral ministry. The anointing is released and imparted and transferred to another person, maybe in different portions. But here's the thing. Just because some um, someone prayed and anointed me doesn't mean everything will happen automatically in my life. If some, for example, there's a worship leader and he anoints me and, you know, anoints somebody and says, okay, I anoint you as the next prophetic worship leader for the nation of India. Now, imagine a person receives it, he goes back to his room, he reads two, three verses from the Bible and spends the next two hours watching TV. Now, God has anointed him, but what must he do? Now, imagine if he's sitting there and he's, he's sitting there and he's saying, God, it's two years, not even one opportunity to lead worship. God, it's five years, no opportunity. That means this prophet is a false prophet. Now, listen, that is, we talked about this, right? God's sovereignty, human responsibility. God will anoint us. People will anoint us for, for God's purposes. But there's a work that we have to do. If, for example, somebody anoints me and says, you are going to be the next prophetic singer or worship leader, whatever. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back, I'm going to pray and say, God, this is what you have given me, help me to prepare. So I began to work hard, begin to prepare, begin to learn, begin to study, spend many hours in God's presence, right? Now, when, you know, I remember somebody had, is it time up? Okay, we'll take a break, we'll come back and we'll continue.